Okay, this channel is about doing things that are recording, uh, documenting things that are not in the manual. And today on the timing chain cover, there are a few things that are in the manual about this. Um, one is the, 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 the sum of the bolt pattern. You have a stud, you have a stud, you have the standard slot screw, standard slot screw, standard slot screw, standard slot screw, and a standard slot screw. But then you have two screws that are long and, 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 and or two bolts, hex bolts that are long and two that are, um, uh, and three that are shorter. Uh, we'll cover, well, where do the two long ones go? Well, we'll cover that. Um, we'll cover, you might notice that I put, I put washers under there. We'll cover why we did that. Um, we'll cover how to put the cover on uh, without having to mess with, uh, mess with the timing chain tension or too badly how how we did that and we'll cover uh, putting the oil sleeve um, the, the oil uh, uh, seal sleeve in so anyway um, if you find this helpful please subscribe and like it uh, or make comments if you know something I don't I always learn from you guys so uh, let's get to it so here's my valve cover and oil pan repair station. I have an old Craftsman table saw that is really cast iron, heavy, strong, solid, and flat. And uh, and what I do is uh, I will, uh, of course, I'll check it with a, I use a square and and check it this way and so on. You know, looking for looking for things. The first thing I do is I take the dimples out of it. And I tried a bunch of different way, fancy ways to, to, to take the dimples out. Um, but I, found, I actually found that the easiest and fastest way is to take my, my precision uh, tool here and just set the valve cover here. And, you know, I, I look this way, find the, you know, I look this way and find a dimple. And now I've taken the dimple, all the dimples out of this one. But uh, find, a, find a dimple and I'll just set it, uh, set it like that and, and pop it. And, and then look at it and pop it and hit, look at it and pop it and look at it until until it looks like it's pretty much out. And then I'll take the uh, I'll take the square and I'll take the square and, and both the flat way and, and, and the other way and make sure the dimples out. So that's the first problem is getting the dimples out. The second problem is that these actually can become warped. Now I bought this one off a friend of mine who races, and you can see the uh, the marks here from where the timing chain tensioner let loose and, and, and just got all messed up in there and the you can see the uh, how badly that's mangled um, and so on uh, so uh, this this one has seen a lot of of bad history um, it also was significantly twisted apparently when they took it took it off uh, they were not careful and they just pounded it and it it, it was kind of racked to the side. So how did I fix that? Well, um, I take an old feeler gauge set and three to five thousand, something like that, and uh, put it against the flat part of the part here, here and, and run it under like this. And this one was all over the place, but you can see that one goes right under right there. There's no resistance there. So that needs to be adjusted. So I'll just bring it over to this side. And that whole that whole side is is warped. So there, there it, it hits there, but it doesn't hit here. To verify that I have that I'm adjusting the right way, what I actually ended up doing is I actually mount this back on the engine, clean it up, mount it on the engine, and then and then check the side and see which part's flat. And then I marked. You can see I uh, see the see the. Uh, See the mark here? That marking with the Sharpie shows the part that was high. This was flushed to the engine. This was high. And so uh, what I was in the process of doing was knocking that side down by holding it like this. Working, working it down. Like that and checking with the feeler gauge. Yeah, just a little high. Just a little high. If I have to, 
what I will do is this. I can't get enough movement the other way. And it may take an hour or two of messing with it. Yeah, see it's starting to stick now. So I've got that moved uh, some, uh, but then yeah, I, I, may, I may have moved it a little bit that way. So then I take my other custom tool, give it a little smack to flatten it. Anyway, working with it that way over a period of about an hour, you can, you can get that pretty straight. This one's fairly straight now compared to what it was, but my other one was much better, so I went with that. So that's how I uh, how I straightened out uh, straightened out the timing cover. Uh, anything else I wanted to say about that? Um, I was very careful on the other timing chain cover. I was very very careful with the distance between here. Um, if this if your time tensioner flops up and down like this too much, it can it, it can gouge into the pe into the pedal. Uh, excuse me. If it flops up and down like this too much, it can it can ride against the metal plate of the engine here and um, and uh, you don't want that to happen so you might want to adjust these I've heard some people put a washer uh, in in there to take up some of the slack and so on uh, that's a consideration um, just wanted to mention really quickly something I noticed on the timing chain cover gasket so I ordered one from Moss which is the one I ended up installing which says uh, which has uh, made in England on it. And it's pretty, pretty thin there. I had another one that I had, had gotten out of a set, um, out of a pay and gasket set uh, from Roaster Factory that was thicker. And it was made of this material. Now this is the material, that, this is a TR3 timing chain cover gasket. It was a little bit thicker, a little more substantial. And <coughs> had I to do it over again, I would uh, want to use the one this thicker one, just because I think the thicker gasket's better, but I wrecked it in uh, in doing an install deinstall um, previously, so uh, it, it delaminated when I when I took it apart. So anyway, just thought you might want to see that. I use this this Permatex fuel resistant gasket dressing and sealant. It's equivalent to Blue Hylamar. Do some research on Blue Hylamar. Uh, but uh, it, it just is superior sealing. And the other thing is it doesn't uh, dry permanent. So you can, if you're lucky, you can take this gasket cover back off. But it, I found it seals against oil real well. I started using it on, a, on, on transmission, chasing down transmission oil leaks. I started using it and uh, even though it seems to go on thin, it, 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 uh, it really works well. If you follow the directions, get it very clean with acetone and uh, and let it uh, coat both sides like you would contact cement kind of idea and then let it flash off give it five ten minutes for the acetone smell to go away and then mate the parts together I've had really good luck with this as far as preventing oil seals the most important thing again is to get the cover really flat and get all the dimples out and get it straight Uh, something I did forget to mention in the manual it doesn't talk about which way to put this oil thrower in, but you want to put the uh, you want to put the dish, the concave side out. So you want the uh, you want the lip to be facing out. You don't want the lip to be facing in. The other thing I, I also replaced the the front seal. I, I happen to need um, a uh, need to add a little bit to an order. And so I got one more seal, um, and I found that, that the seal that I got from Moss, I like it a little better than the one that I got from wherever all I got the other one from. It's, it feels a little firmer and more substantial. So again, Moss, I don't, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but uh, uh, I kind of like that one. So uh, I put blue Hylamar around this, and I pressed it in. I have a press. I pressed it in very carefully. Um, also, people have been talking about installing the timing chain, installing the timing chain cover, and having uh, having a, a problem with it, and and you know, people taking a uh, taking a um, uh, an Allen wrench and holding it down, or taking dental floss and holding it down, or using a screw to hold it down. I, I've never done any of that. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. But here's how I do it. 
I simply put it this way so that the chain, the, the tensioner, is now sitting again, now it is inside of that chain now, and I just turn it like this. and pop it on it's as simple as that i i don't understand the need to do the other things but uh perhaps uh, somebody can explain what i'm missing because i don't think i am that's as, i think it's as easy as that so um we're getting ready to put the timing chain cover on and here we can see that in the manual we can see the pattern we have the two um the two uh, studs here. We have we can see the pattern of the uh, of of the standard screw slot ones here and and the one down here. Now the question I have is there are five uh, five bolts and two of them these two are slightly longer than the rest. And if you look in the manual, it doesn't talk about that. If you look on the website for the vendors, I looked at Roser's Roaster Factory, uh, Rumor Brothers, and Moss Europe, and none of them talk about the difference between those. And all of, all of them list all of these five as the same bolt for replacement, so I guess it doesn't matter. What I did just for fun was I took an, took an Allen wrench and I put it through the holes and I found that that one goes through and that one goes through and uh, let's see that one does not that one does not and that one does not so there's two two holes this one and this one that go through I'm gonna put the longer bolts in those and the shorter bolts in the others so the longer bolt goes I'm gonna put here I'm going to put here and notice it's just uh, on each of them is just clockwise to the locating pin on each of them so that's what I'm going to do the other thing I've done is I've uh, is I've black oxided a bunch of washers and I'm going to put those under the um, under the um, each of the bolts uh, with the lock washer because I don't want I think the lock washer contributes to the dimpling and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to only torque this down to 8 to 10 pounds as opposed to the 16 in the manual um, just because these tend to leak from over tightening and, and uh, I think the, the the 10 pounds is going to be enough so uh, let's finish this up one last thing I wanted to mention is you'll notice there's goop on these um, that that is um, Blue Hylamar or Permatex fuel resistant, and I've also gooped, um, put put a little bit in the hole to let it dry. Um, that's to seal the th the holes that go through. Um, that's to seal uh, seal it against oil leaks. So uh, that's why I did that. So let me finish it up now. Well, I don't have a standard screwdriver slot um, bit for my uh, in three eighths drive. So what I do is I approximate it, and I, I, I use a uh, I use a a uh, screwdriver and a crescent wrench, and uh, this crescent wrench or this screwdriver, by the way, is a is uh, got a really nice big tip on it. Uh, I use this for door hinges and and other screws this size, and if you torque down the the regular bolts. Uh, first and then uh, and you kind of get a feel for it then you just go with that same sort of feel on the screws that's what I do anyway I guess I could go down and buy a, a socket for it but uh, this works for me again the goal is you don't want to over tighten it because over tightening it leads to dimples bending the pan and, and, and creating a, a gap that's also why I put these washers under here is to prevent it from bending the pan, the, the lock washers from dimpling the pan. So uh, we'll see if that uh, avoids the leaks. Uh, for the paint on this, I use VHT um, engine paint and I bake it for a half an hour at uh, 200 degrees. That uh, makes it tougher according to the directions. 
Uh, also, uh, I'm, I did not replace the um, the goop that's on here. Uh, there's, there's some goo that goes on there, uh, and uh, some people use Bondo to, to put that back. It supposedly quiets it down. Uh, I didn't bother on this one on my TR3. I did put Bondo on it to uh, reproduce the original. And the bolt heads, I did not paint them. I got a black oxide kit from Caswell, and it only takes a minute to, to you know, oh, 10, 10, 15 minutes to black oxide a set of bolts, and so that's what I chose to do rather than paint them. I painted them before, but the, the paint just always seems to chip. Uh, I, I've been playing with the black oxide. I kind of like it. If you look carefully in the manual, you'll see that the... Uh, that the uh, ch most chamfer side goes in. Uh, here I have a, a new part from um, the Roadster factory and I'm going to put the most chamfered side in. I put some uh, assembly lube on it and we're going to put it with the get it adjusted to the keyway. There, I don't know if I can do this one handed. Not very well, so I'm going to go ahead and put you down and put this on. Okay, uh, I ended up having to tap it in within. I use a brass hammer and a brass punch. Uh, my brother made this in the 70s in metal shop, and I use it. He's passed away, but I, I use this in his memory uh, as with some of my dad's tools. So it's in. Uh, here's the old one. And you can see see that line in it. Uh, that's the line from wear in the seal. And uh, that's why you want to replace it now on a on a like a TR3 or something. You might need one need to well, it doesn't have this piece. You might need to use a speedy sleeve, but it's so much cheaper and easier to just uh, pop a new one in here. But that that uh, that uh, worn spot will leak oil. So there we are, the timing chain cover is all installed. Hopefully it will not leak. Uh, one other thing I did not mention is, uh, is I put a classic tech, from Classic Technologies, or you can buy them from the other vendors, I put the solid steel um, bridge under here so I didn't have to worry about these bolts stripping out, so, uh, or these stripping out. So uh, anyway, um, timing chain cover is installed. Uh, that gave you some overview of things I learned about it uh, or things I know about it. Uh, if this is helpful, please subscribe and uh, like the video. It encourages me to do more. Thank you.